Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another week of BlastCast. Once again, with me is my bastion of common sense, Lightning Dragon. And this week, of course, we had some good information come out, some fun things, some things we kind of uh, wanted to go over a little bit, as usual. How are you doing today, Lightning? I am doing amazing, because I slept like ass, and I hurt all over. <laughs> but that's every day. Well, that's a, that's part of the, that's, that's part of the fun of the time change. I'm I'm so thrown off right now. I, I I always sore every time I wake up. It's just different degrees. Did I sleep very little? Okay, that's good. You're tired, but you're not sore. Did I sleep a lot? Okay, you're not tired, but you're sore. <laughs> you wake up with your head your your feet behind your ears, like what the hell? <sighs> oh yeah, what the heck happened? Uh, I I don't sleep very well. Yeah. Well, I don't sleep consistently either, especially when they have, they change the time on this. Because after that, you get off work and you think you got an extra hour or something, and it's just it's just four a.m. Actually, it's not four a.m. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, so you know, this week they had some really good information, Star Citizen. Uh, anyway, we had we had some thoughts uh, looking at some of the uh, some of the stuff they were talking about. They went and showed uh, for starters a a chart that showed kind of a flow chart for how trading was going to work in three point oh. And, you know, kind of some thoughts on that, you know, because we, you know, we see a lot of things like graphically that are done. Uh, ships that are, looks like they're ready to fly or the animations are finished or whatever. But when you look at the fact that 3.0 is supposed to have some of this trading and things in it, and that, and that the only thing they're showing you so far is flow, flow charts, chart. which tells me it's not the graphical uh, or things like that that's holding up 3.0. It's it's the systems. It's the it's the systems like trading. It's the systems like shops maybe that's holding everything up. Yeah. And for example, like the item system. Item system yeah. was supposed to be in a while ago, but it kind of got pushed back. You exactly. know, item system might be done now. And what's holding 3.0 back is this this trade system. It could be that there was a lot more things like on the plate beforehand, and then like, oh, well, this is broken. We need to fix this before we, you know, go move on to the next project. And trade might have just got pushed back farther and farther. Right, where, right. And and it looks like what they're trying to do, um, because they had that world simulator, quote unquote, board game that they made. Exactly. It looks like they're trying to do the same thing with trade. So they yeah. got this really nice flow chart. Hopefully, you've got some I was actually awesome gonna, pictures. I was actually going to bring up that little board game they made. That was a <laughs> something they had talked about. They they basically created a, a pen and paper version of an RPG, so to speak. You know, they basically went out there, and laid out the economy as a, as a, as a game. And so looking at this flow chart very much reminded me of that. So you know, I think you know they've got this. I see. They have done Chris Roberts' stuff. They're, they, they're familiar with graphics. They're familiar with a lot of these these animations and things like that. But this economy, this whole trading and selling and transporting of goods, and this is this is an MMO environment. This is something. Um, this is new to, to I think uh, to some of these people. Uh, not all of them, of course, obviously. But, well, a lot of them are FPS people. They, yeah, they've never done anything like that. Well, you, you got you got to integrate all the stuff onto the servers. You got to make sure that you know it's got it's got to go together with the AI. So the AI is doing missions based upon what the what the economy is doing. It's there it's a lot of integration. Has to be an inventory as well. Yeah, you know, inventory. There, there's a hundred units of steel here, right? It has to know that there's a hundred units of steel, so I have to make a way of tracking that. Right. And and also having like, oh well, we've got so much steel here, we need to have a mission go out to either players or AI um, so that the AI will come there and grab the iron and then actually physically transport it there. It, the, the, the level of scope and depth they're trying to make this game is just absolutely monstrous. Uh, yeah, and it's it, not player run. I mean, with EVE, basically you just throw all the co components in there and then mm -hmm. players will eventually you know, build these trade networks. But yeah. Star Citizen, they don't want that because frankly it's kind of I mean, if you don't have a good player base to support it, those systems just won't work. So it's good that they're doing that because technically you could play the PU completely solo and still have a full game experience. And if IM mode doesn't go away, it might end up being that. <laughs> Eventually, yeah. Uh, you know, and that's that's definitely uh, you know, as I said, looking at this, I really think that this this is the hold up now um, because. I would expect it would have expected to see something more than just a flow chart. Uh, I would have expected to see if it was further along at this point in time, uh, demonstrations in game, maybe a little bit of, of the system. So to me, that that, that kind of that, that kind of like highlighted that for me. But yeah, there's so, a lot of supporting things like the grabby hands and yeah. missions. Well, we've seen the grabby kind of, hands in action, but you know well, there's still some I mean. bugs. Like, but, yeah. Grabby hands are like basically in the game. That's yeah. something that you know will be used. And then you have um, I'm trying to think of one of the, the missions. I missions just hate that. I mean, I, I, in the game. 
That name grabby hands. I mean, every time I think yeah. it's, like, so, it's like every time I hear it, I think it's like some pervert name, the damn thing. You know, it's just this guy. Uh, Dr. Grabby hands. I know. I just oh, see this person Chris. running forward, their hands outstretched, and all the women running, screaming from them. <laughs> you know, it's, it's that like, like hey. that sounds like a plot to an anime. Oh my gosh, it's terrible. Uh, so yeah, they. Uh, so that's what we think. We think trading and stuff is one of the large reasons for the whole of the three yeah. point at this but point. But the, there's there's quite a few systems that are already in place that will be yeah. supporting by trading. But like the actual, like maybe the physical boxes are already modeled. But they don't have the infrastructure for, you know, like inventory and supply and demand and, and some of these things that are, are pretty common knowledge as far as like trading goes. But they have to build all that stuff. There's no foundation in it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, also, they showed a bit more of the Cutlass this week, uh, the Cutlass interior. And it's you looking can, amazing. Oh, you can tell you what, you can really see the Buccaneer out of that thing. Uh, and I am very happy to see. Uh, like, like, example, the turret looks like it's it's separated out with it, it, with an airlock. I'm kind of interested to see how that how that works. Uh, but basically, ever since you know, I think this is one of the things going back once again to the next great starship. Um, though someday I'd like to fly my you know Redeemer um, someday. But the thing is, is that you know the the the, the, oh, the, uh, the 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 ship designs that came in, the concepts like the turrets being locked off by airlocks and things like that. Uh, those kind of concepts that came in completely changed the direction that CIG had been making ships after that point in time. And so to see them implement like so these, these these ideas of airlocks behind turrets, this uh, this is it's it's to me. I was like thought like you know remember the uh, some maturity of the developers. Yeah, yeah. You remember the original uh, time they showed the PU and the turrets were blown off. They, they they go into the retaliator and they're going down into it. Oh and, and, yeah. Yeah, and, and I always thought you know man, one turret gets popped off the retaliator, you vented the entire damn ship. And and so I mean those kind of things to me like they need to be revised a little bit, but or you know, so we'll we'll see what happens with all that. So it's funny but, too because in anime is like um, Gundam and stuff. Whenever they're in combat, they're in full EVA suits, even if they're sitting on the cockpit. So. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you know, and that's the thing too. I, they always show like the, you know you have the uh, the clothes you can buy at stations, you know, like the normal suits and jackets and t-shirts and jeans. And I jackets. keep thinking, and I, and I keep thinking to myself um, that uh, you're never going to wear this shit. You're going to be in your, yeah, your EVA suit like all the time. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, 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 and I think to myself, well, you know, if I had a choice between wearing body armor when there's like other the potential of other players shooting me somewhere from a distance, or wearing like a t-shirt that says you know whatever on it you know get like bent. Some, yeah get bent or whatever i mean i'm gonna i'm gonna go for the body armor and it has and has a, a picture of a girder that's bent at a 90 degree angle <laughs> bender from uh, futurama <laughs> exactly <laughs> so no the uh but you know i mean unless there's like restrictions on planets like hey we don't allow people to wear armor or carry weapons here uh then you know i, I imagine really... i imagine armor is something that they they would be fine with but I guarantee you, weapons will have to be like stowed and locked in a, in a lot of ports. Like, it, like you land in your ship. Like if you, I'm thinking Maz Eisley off the top of my head. I don't know why, but like you know, you you come down, you land in the spaceport, and you when you get out, it's like you know, there's guards there, and it's like you have to check your weapons here. You know, you can't bring them. That that's all. You can you can continue. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you can't bring. It sounded like you had more of a thought flowing there. I was like. No, it's basically it. Like you come up. That was that was that was such, that was such an abrupt cut off. I'm like, <laughs> is there more? Co- I, th- I thought you lost no, internet. No. I thought you lost internet there for a minute. I was like, what's going no. on with that? No, okay. The short version is like, if you go up to the guard <laughs> station, they'll be like, you know, you have to chuck your weapons in here, and you're like, oh, okay, you know, and you're just not allowed to bring weapons there. So that's that's the end. Of I, the I don't think I've ever heard you. Goes. I don't think I've ever heard you finish this, finish a statement or a sentence more abruptly than that my entire life. It was like boop, <laughs> and I thought, well, did you lose maybe, internet? Maybe, maybe the. Uh, <laughs> Maybe the voice detection cut out for a second. Then I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. I guess you'll have to hear it on anyway, the playback. Anyway, truck stops. Truck stops. <laughs> are truck stops. Be a thing. Exactly. Truck stops. And that that was. I think that's a great idea. Actually, you it know, really the, is. Well, the idea that you know you're not going to bring your prost your, your your raw goods just to like Walmart and start trying to throw like a chunk of iron on the counter and go, "What you give me for this?" You know, basically, you're going to take it to a dedicated place. That deals with these particular kinds of uh, of resources and things like that, and they're going to be kind of like a storage lot slash yeah. trade hub. Wholesalers, uh, you know, uh, you know, the, the merchants just just flat out not not finished products, and, and that to me that's you know when they, if they're putting in as we saw with the prospector being in, in gray box phase, uh, and and them stating very clearly that we're going to have mining in 3.0. 
Um, at the very least, I hope they get the one out for mining because I want to. I'm going to be using my prospector a lot during that because right now I am a little weary. H. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a little weary. <laughs> I don't know why. That just kind of something came to mind with the Death Star. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, is that was because a big laser at the end of the, of the Buccaneer. Yeah, there you go. That's it. So, no, for, you know, well, basically all we've had in the PU is either looking for salvage or combat or basically uh, having something that's a bit different. Uh, you know, especially if I can, with the prospector, be able to mine on a planet and then be able to take it to one of these, uh, take it to one of these truck stops, so to speak. And that's another this... good thing about these truck stops um, is if you think about it, um, they have they've pretty much stated I don't know if they said it this week or like previous weeks that if you're in a fighter you're not going to be able to go very far so if you're in let's say an extended range fighter like the um, Mustang Beta I believe that's the exploration one yeah you might have like drop tanks right to extend your your range so you'll probably be stopping at these truck stops a lot to like refuel so not only can you like sell off like oh i just scanned this planet it's got this kind of ore you can like sell off the scanning data but you can also like buy fuel and fill up your ship so it'll add a like like real rest stops if you've ever been on a road trip and you're driving on the highway and you're like oh man i gotta pee and the car needs fuel or whatever you know you, you pull off the freeway or highway or whatever you know country you're in i mean i don't know what they're called and autobahn there that's the german one i think but uh you pull off you refill you know recharge your batteries you get something to eat or whatever and that really feels like what it's going to be and so oh, that's kind please, of green please be like the diner in space balls <laughs> 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 I, I, that 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 would be totally worth it. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> We're done. We're moving on. <laughs> so yeah, they've got uh, of course female animations are being added in, and uh, now it it's kind of like they're in like the last stages of it because they were yeah. talking about animations, which is like climbing into your ship and some of the rigging. I think they were still working on. Yeah, yeah, they have to do some. There's some, you know, they're doing the, you know with the motion capture and things like that. It's just a matter of getting oh, things and, transferred um, over. Uh, the voice acting that was one of the things they were talking about as well they kind of did, also they talked about the the new spectrum website a little bit and we got a kick out of it because there was a scene uh, about 12 uh, 12 minutes about 12 minutes 50 or 12 minutes 52 seconds in that 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 is that funny they were showing the main page and the page was like had several of those these debates we've been having on I am because <laughs> Right, the front page, and I'm like, oh, this has been immortalized, you know, because they're, yeah, how, how to fix turrets, in the yeah, how to fix currently. turrets, and yeah, exactly, and and, and other things like that. These are all issues that I believe you know, there was make, something about removing IM mode as well, right? Like remove aim to fly. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was aim to fly. Yeah, and was. and so you know these these um these these topics have actually are, are still listed as the hottest topics on Spectrum if you sort by. Like uh, a mo like most popular hottest topic or whatever. But don't worry, because oh. they're working on adding more features to Spectrum, probably including <laughs> people and Katamari. <laughs> so you won't see these these no, hot no. topic and and uh, triggering threads anymore because you know no. those those things are important. Game controls have absolutely nothing to do exactly. with gameplay. Exactly, they don't. They don't. They have, they're, they're top men are working on it. Yes, top men. <laughs> So yeah, so it was real kind of funny to see that. I got a kick out of that. Is that now, now it's immortalized forever in a round of verse. They can't say yeah. it didn't happen. Um, and of course, uh, with the spectrum as well, they're getting close to uh, implementing voice chat into it. So now we'll be able to go ahead and not only send private messages to one each other, telling us how 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 horrible we are, but we can go we can go ahead and get someone on there and scream at them. <laughs> no, I'm really looking forward to actually getting. Uh, you know, we Lightning and I uh, when we're not recording these shows we use TeamSpeak for this because it's got a really nice suite for recording um the thing is though is, is that uh, uh we use discord for the rest of the time and and the thing is is, is that having uh, a voice chat basically what spectrum is is discord pretty much your star citizen could be your hub for any if your guild is a multi-game guild star citizen could really become the, the website could become the hub for your entire organization no matter what they're doing and and that's great because i think sometimes we you know if, you, if you're if you're dealing with larger guilds and you know that a lot of people out there they're gonna be playing different mmos they're gonna be playing different fps's um it'd be really cool to be able to have them all right there and 
just basically like, hey, I know you're playing Elder Scrolls Online. Do you want to go ahead and uh, jump in and do a mining thing with us? And, you know, just that kind of nice instant yeah. communication. If it has the same customizations as Discord, you can set up a channel that's like a chat channel or a voice channel that's yeah. just like, this is the chat channel for this game. And if you don't want to see messages pop up, like, I don't care if people are playing ESO right now. You can just mute it and be like, I don't want to. I'll read it later if it's important. Yeah. And then you don't have all the little, like, messages being popped up. Well, that's or if a... you're, you know, playing Star Citizen, you know, you might want to see that stuff. Yeah, but what's really great, too, is the fact that, you know, because it's more than just, like, a Discord chat server. I mean, we're looking at the fact there's a, there's there's forms implemented into this. So, I mean, your, your, your guild, your organization... Having the ability, like if, if you have a multi-game guild, you're not, you, you can host your website, quote unquote, right through Star Citizen. So you can have your general tab, your your tech, you can make all these different t areas to talk about different things, and and so you know, a lot of times I designed a website a long time ago for a guild that I ran, and the thing is, is that you know, it, it's it's not an all-in-one feature. I mean, here is this is an all-in-one feature. That I really. I like it. It needs some needs some work. It needs work on mobile devices. My phone sometimes I'm posting. It's it gets really wonky on typing. It's really slow. But that was one of the things they were talking about doing yeah. more support for is mobile devices. Which yeah, to me I'm like big deal. I use my phone for texting and and calling and music and like alarms. That's that's why I use my. I have a yeah, smartphone but... where I use about ten percent of the power because having some of those extra features in there is nice. But you know. But what they're what they're planning on doing is so important because like you could be in the game at you know two or three in the morning and I could be at my job and then you could send me a message and I can talk to you while you're in game from my job. So that's the kind of thing that 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 kind of implementation. Those of us on the Star Citizen channel do not <laughs> condone <laughs> playing games while at work. Do not try this at home. Do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. <laughs> well, if your boss gets you, you won't collect two hundred dollars. That much is certain. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing more integration on that. I've been happy with the site, and I just hope that they don't start catamaring all the important debates because uh, it's nice that the community is starting to see the stuff that's been buried for basically three plus years now. Uh, yeah, because it's it's not like it's we hate the game, blah blah blah. No, we, we love we I everyone, love what the game's gonna be offering. We I want just, everyone we have concerns. To use joysticks, no keyboard, no mouse controls. <laughs> no, you you can't. You have yeah. to have keyboard or mouse controls. Exactly. You just have to. But the thing is, you shouldn't have, you know, 100% to 1,000% more kill-to-death ratio if you choose to use a mouse as opposed to choose and use a joystick. You know, as long as they're close, you know. Yeah, I don't, like that doesn't, say, nothing's going to be perfect. 5% difference if you're yeah. using the virtual mouse as opposed to an actual keyboard, or not keyboard, joystick. Yeah. That, well, where the, where the mouse has a disadvantage is the dead zone because you, you have to memorize it through muscle memory. Where it has an advantage is that anywhere past the zero point, see, a, a stick has a spring that forces it back to center. Um, and the mouse doesn't have that. So it's more stable on the, on the part where you're moving away from the center than a stick is. So this is where, this is where the, 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 it meshes up on, on, the, on the balance. So the stick is more stable, uh, is easier to center, but the mouse is more stable because it doesn't have the countering force trying to pull it back to center. So that that's that's basically where it, it, where one is uh, a muscle memory uh, of location, uh, and the other one is is it's a two types of muscle memory. One's like a, a grid based, and the one is a but basically like how far your deflection is. But as long as they're both using first order setup, uh, the accuracy uh, the the one that's a disadvantage and advantages are opposite of one another, and that kind of balances it off. But you know, but, it's one of those. Mm, but the ahead. thing is, it's it's not. You know which one is better if if they no, get close. It's just one options for people. Yeah. Equal options. If, if they get close, it's whatever you prefer to use. Yeah, you exactly. Prefer to fly with the mouse. You prefer to fly with the joystick. Yeah. I mean, you can pick whatever you want. Um, but the the real balancing factor we have in the game right now is it's it controls are part of it. I mean that that's definitely a big part of it. But yeah, it's well, it's gunner. equal implementation. You can't have one system that only one mode and one controller yeah. can use. Gimbals being basically only usable by mouse is that's yeah, bad. Well, only yeah, only by mouse interactive mode. See, mouse relative yeah. mouse virtual stick can't use gimbals. Yeah. So you have like three modes on the mouse, and only one mode on the mouse can use the gimbals. And that's that's not cool. But uh, yeah. also, it's just there's no balance in the weapon damage right now. I mean, there's almost no benefit or no uh, no downside. No, and, well, yeah, and, and here's the thing that an alien war pointed this out. Uh, with the uh, you know the minus one size reduction, it, it, it also it won't balance because well they're only considering the minus one damage reduction on fighters within a certain scope. They said once you add in larger ships, 
who can't turn as fast, then that that minus that 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 time on target difference becomes even worse. And and then and then basically you, the the damage gap gets wider and wider and wider with with I am basically having that bigger and bigger advantage. So uh, look, look, we'll go off topic just for a <laughs> second here before we just go over to the happy hour. <clears throat> One of the things we were talking about off camera or not in the recording sense is um, my suggestion was basically you have like a 10% difference in damage between the weapon sizes, but how you balance it is you bring in certain inaccuracies. So if it's a gimbal mount, it's going to have a base inaccuracy already and what I was talking about, um, which you had something similar to this, but yeah, I think weapon it, spread. What, yeah, well, that's what I mean. You have an inaccuracy, but like the, the different sizes uh, affects your your inaccuracy. So, for example, if you have size one gimbals, well, they're gimbals, so they're going to have inaccuracy already on them. So that's your base inaccuracy. They're going to have lower damage. Um, Take but higher energy, maybe less. Maybe their heating yeah, systems aren't as effective. Them, so I mean, you don't need a you, yeah. You don't need a minus but, one any of this stuff. You just have no. to implement it differently. But like, if you go up to a size two weapon, a size two gimbal is going to have right. more inaccuracy because it's got and it's a heavier weapon. It may yes. slew slower because yeah. it's the fact that it's it's got more weight on the weapon, more mass. And then um, because it's a higher weapon, it'll use more energy. Right. So while your DPS might go up a little bit, or your damage, let's not use DPS. Let's, your damage might go up per <laughs> shot. Um, you're going to have even less accuracy. And one of the things you can do in in the system that we were talking about, or I was talking about, is your rate of fire also has a factor for your inaccuracy. So if you have really, really fast firing weapons, one, yeah. they're going to burn through energy faster, and two, they're going to, quote unquote, get less accurate the more you fire it because the weapon's heating up. And it's, you know, it's well, as I said, that, that could, I always thought that should be kind of be implemented with a ship shutter to a degree to it as yeah. well. Like, you know, uh, you're, you're like if you're in space and you're holding a gun, and you're firing. That should be pushing you backwards. Yeah, something like that. If if they did it simple and basically made it so that the barrel of your weapon, I would I would only really do this with physical weapons, just because of the inherent nature of physical weapons, where imparting a force of energy is maybe not enough to matter. But what they could do is basically for every physical weapon you have, the barrel counts as the projectile exit point and a small thruster. So you're basically thrusting yeah. slightly away every time you fire. And that'd be maybe the easiest way to do it. And I believe compensating for that, unless you were like using a Gatling gun, like if you had all Gatling guns, it's probably going to add up really quickly. But if you had like large caliber weapons, you know, boom, you know, you kind of have to, your, your ship's going to automatically reset after that, but you can't just hold down the fire button because it's going to be harder and harder. You'll be fighting yeah. the, the ship. Here's hoping but, that you know we'll see what, how deep they want to go with it, but you know yeah, to me so those are those are just some suggestions. There's a, yeah, there's but, other there's other things they could do. Definitely. But having having the inaccuracy uh, tied to your gimbals as the sizes go up, uh, obviously for like fighters, uh, this, the the inaccuracy would be a little different for large ships. Mm -hmm. Maybe they wouldn't actually have less accuracy because it's a bigger gimbal mount. So like let's say and swing further stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's say that fighters can only have you know sizes one, two, and three. They can't have fours. They can't have anything like that. So that's how you, you limit the fighters, and then your larger ships like start at three and go up to like you know you know three four five or something. Well, if you look at the gimbal mount, for example, on a freelancer, those front turrets are that, and they're basically what they are is they're they're, they're 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 turrets to a degree. You would have more stability on something like that than say like the hockey puck. And yeah. so I mean, there's there's certain you have to factor in maybe you know what kind of like is it a hockey puck or is it actually like a turret of some kind? Uh, so those are the kind of things that you know you want to look at, but. You know, overall, it's just just constant thoughts. This is a debate that's been going on and on, and we're always tr trying to think of a way of bringing the community together on this because it's important that we're all doing the same thing with the same rules. Uh, we don't. We all. It's important that we all have our choices. That was a promise, controller agnostic, and 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 CIG couldn't be more wrong about mouse for aim, stick for flying, uh, because it's just flat out wrong. The hit, uh, I'll look at the the flight games for the last twenty years. Uh, they proved them wrong. I mean, it, it, I still think he's in the mentality that we're using mice with a little ball, with a little rubber ball on it. Because uh, if that was the case, I tend to agree with them. But we're using lasers now, so we can put they're, that they're argument right in the garbage. Massively more accurate. Exactly. But anyway, moving on to the happy hour. The happy hour, which is normally not a happy. You hour. know, and I've had a couple good shows now. I have to say, this one was enjoyable. Yes, it was. It had, it had Sean Tracy on there. Who Sean Tracy is uh, always good. Yes, he's he's there. Um, he worked for Crytek. Mm -hmm. um, as one of their super dudes, and now he's the Crytek expert, quote unquote expert, for Star Citizen, and he gets down into the technical nitty gritty stuff. 
and he doesn't say it like over the top of your head kind of way. He like kind of goes like, "It's like this, yeah, it's like this, like this." He's enjoyable to listen to, but he's the opposite of Tony when it comes to like trying to, uh, <laughs> you know, he go he he'll go into all the Tony will go all the all the details. That, you know, uh, he will he he will go into he will speak just at, at a normal default level, kind of explain to those who aren't technical. I I like I like the contrast, but they're both you can tell that both of them have that same level of passion. Yeah, which is a good thing to hear, as opposed to, oh, we really don't like you know, working on game controls. It's your job to work on game controls. Either, yeah, here's, an applica- you, here's an application. <laughs> either you get a different job, you ask to be moved into your department, or yeah. you freaking suck up and deal with it because you're being paid to do this. <laughs> you know, we, not uh, everybody likes their job, so shut up and deal with it. And oh, especially man. don't say that to the people that are paying your salary. <laughs> I mean, that's just, oh, that'd be like walking up to your boss saying, I really don't like working with you. Also, you're a douche. I mean, <laughs> that's, what? that's not what you're supposed to do. Uh, anyway, I've, actually, I've actually kind of done that once. Anyways, yeah, so, well. <laughs> the guy was anyway, a second in charge moving, of it. Uh, yeah. Moving on. Character <laughs> creation. They talked about it. You're, you're yes, gonna they did. You're going to have um, preset kind of options like head, hair, you know, body, build. And that will be your general character, and then you can go in there and, and tweak it later as you like. Uh, I'm assuming it's going to be a lot like Fallout 4 and The Sims 4. Those are the two games that come to mind. I'm sure there's more. I just can't think of them off the top of my head because I, I don't play a lot of different games. <laughs> you know, and it, we got to hear about the special new character options we have, like where the, the head is stuck to the middle finger and the torso is yeah. floating up. And that was, that was, that's, we, that, we can, I'm looking forward to that. We can be spore creations. Exactly. Exactly. No, they were, they, I really hope they show that video because they said they were they were, they were having problems yeah, with this video in house. <laughs> oh yeah, they said they, were, they had a bug where the guy's head was stuck to his middle finger, and then like and like his the body was like detached and like, like floating off to the side, and just like this weird mutant thing going on. Yeah, because so, the the new new clothing system. Yeah. If, if the the I always kind of think of them as res ref, but it's like the, the ID or whatever. The mm-hmm. if it's close, it, it, the, because it's like two different systems talking to each other. Yeah. One of the systems it doesn't know what the system is saying, so it just it just screws up and just starts placing things all all over the place. And that's one of the reasons that um, we haven't seen that go into live yet because it's still kind of buggy and they're working on it. Yeah, once again, one of those systems you know that might be holding things back just a little bit. Um, so yeah. Uh, also, they brought up the idea. They're looking at. Uh, they showed like Malie animations. They, were, they kind of demonstrated them a bit too. Assassinations from different sides, uh, front, back, left, right, and they talked about how there, there's going to be a kind of a rudimentary fighting system, possibly for hand to hand. Now, I don't know if any of you out there ever played the uh, series Chronicles of Riddick on the PC. There's two of them. There's uh, Escape from Butcher's Bay and uh, Dark Athena. I can't given a praise of those two games. Those games came out the same year the Half-Life 2 came out. At least, at least Escape from Butcher's Bay did. It almost beat uh, Half-Life 2 for Game of the Year. Now, first of all, wow. Second of all, it's a movie title starring, actually starring Vin Diesel, who, who plays, once again, Riddick. And it's the backstory before Pitch Black, but both that and Dark Athena are actually before Pitch Black. Um, so... And it's 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 most movie titles, you can movie games, they suck. I mean, these just They're flat out bad, suck. Yeah. These games are fantastic. And but what's what's what a what a reason I'm bringing them up is they have this section where you're in prison, and you use it a lot. You're fighting hand to hand. There's punches. There's blocks. It's how you it's how you're moving. It's how it's how you're you're moving the mouse. It depends on how if you're doing a hook or if you're doing an uppercut or or whatever. And it was really well implemented. And for those of you who you know haven't played the game, and I really do recommend playing it, you can probably pick it up on GOG or on Steam now for just a couple bucks. There's a pack that has both of them. Fantastic! If you like the whole Pitch Black Chronicles of Riddick stuff, you'll love these. So, anyway, so yeah, that's something I, I'm hoping. I don't if, think Chronicles of Riddick is on Steam. Oh, well, then it's on GOG. I, I know I have it. Uh, I think yeah, you might be right. I think I got it on GOG. Uh, but the point yeah, is, is that you get the, Steam. yeah, you get you get the two pack then on GOG. So fantastic! We're checking out. Uh, so yeah, if they do even something even close to that, I don't know if they would, but man, that would be so awesome. Yeah, that, that, they, they what it sounded like is it's like they want to add unarmed combat is like you know we're gonna put it in the game because it needs yeah. to be in the game, but depending on how much like time and effort and like feedback they get, they might expand on it. But you're gonna see at the very basics, you know, a rudimentary thing where you can block and punch because they talked about like a, a brawl, like a, a fist fight in a bar. You know, you, you, maybe in Squadron 42, you uh, 
can maybe insult someone's mother and, and have a little drunken brawl <laughs> and, and that might, might be a thing and you might I guess I could just see that wheel conversation pop up you know like if someone asks you how's your day going it's like I'm doing fine I'm oh, tired. Okay, go, 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 go F yourself. <laughs> Third option. <laughs> what? So, so, you know, maybe that's going to be in the game. We don't know. I'm just kind of speculating. But, uh, you know, that, that'd be an interesting thing to, to have in the game. You can get into a, a brawl fight in the, in the story and actually go to the brig and, you know, not go on a certain combat mission and you basically get punished for it. Like, uh, yeah, you know, we're busting you back to, you know, whatever rank because of this. And yeah. it, may, it may affect your overall game performance. We don't know, but... You know, it might be a thing. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see what they do with it. And, um, you know, lastly, the thing that they kind of talked about, which, you know, Lightning found kind of interesting here, was the fact they, uh, how they're basically splitting up their, their, their areas uh, into small uh, groups to coordinate uh, within the company so that basically the, the, the artists and the, like, the animators and all this stuff, they, they, can, they get their stuff together kind of in real time as they're doing it to try to make sure that, there's no oh I finished the entire project and I can't do anything with it kind of thing. So basically, yeah, we're- like if if someone's designing a bunch of guns, for example, because that's what they showed a lot of. And if like the artist gets the design, okay, this is the gun I want to model. He goes through all the animation, all the touch up stuff, and he just passes it off. He makes like let's say he makes like five guns. I mean that's not realistic, but let's say he makes five guns and they just kind of sit around because the backlog of uh, the um, animations guys, the guys that do all the animations for like the trigger and the shells ejecting. He's got other stuff he's working on. He can't look at that stuff. So like, let's say like a week goes by, he's the the, anim- or the artist, he's, he's done, he's, he's working on other things. So the animator gets the things and they're, they're broken. I can't use them. So that means the artist has to stop everything he's doing and redo those things for the, the animator so he can then get them to work. And with this new system, basically they're kind of tying all these guys together so that when you know when something's done, you go, okay, this thing is done. Here you go, and then the animator will look at it and go, oh great, this looks good, or oh, can you change this thing? It's not working, you know, quite right here. So they can toss it back, and he goes, he can fix it, and they can do these things a lot faster, and and they're saving a lot more time, and um, just overall, it's it's I find it interesting because they're basically telling you that we're getting things done faster than we've ever done before as we've kind of learned to work you know across studios I and mean, this isn't just in a single studio i mean they're they're talking about working with you know frankfurt and and manchester i think are the two, one of them uh is with the austin guys and stuff or not austin anymore it's well yeah the other one is well the thing for me is that it shows that they're you know what i like is that they're always trying to refine their process and i think that's you know that that's that's a great thing because you know there's always areas to learn and you know as 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 they're going to be doing sequels, of course, to Squadron 42. And obviously this first one is going to take the longest to put out. But those other ones aren't going to take near as long because they're going to have this process very refined by the time they get this yeah. finished. Yeah, and, and all the... the Assets unless they, introduce, they unless they introduce new ships because, like, ships yeah. are the biggest thing to take the most time. True. And, uh, and from what it sounds like, the, the ship pipeline, as they like to call it, is, like, working like a greasy clock wheel. I mean, it's just... They're just bam, 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 bam. Everything, everything is going super fast super smooth and ships are being built faster than they've ever been built before um so we're, we're seeing massive progress rapid progress um which means we're gonna get you know new ships new guns new armor all these things much much faster but again we you know when we look back at the, the first part of this episode what's really holding back 3.0 right now is we feel is is the trade system because a lot of that it doesn't all the 3d stuff is done i mean it, it's all there it's all ready to go but it's the programming and logistics things that are, are slowing it down. And yeah, and this, this is why system, they're refining these kind of pipelines yeah. is important. And, and this system will also help with the programmers because, you know, those are kind of your, your, like, right there in the in the trenches, guys. Yeah. Yeah, so here's hoping that they get this refined a little bit more. They do a little do things just a little bit cleaner, a little bit faster, and, you know. We end up with a better product in the long run. Yeah. As long as they get rid of IM mode, and then they can start working on something that's more, a bit more important, like balancing gunnery. Yeah. Well, all right, everyone. Well, that should be everything for this week's Blast Cast. And thank once again, thanks you for thank you. Blah, 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 blah. Thanks for watching, everybody. Blah, 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 blah. Leave, blah, blah, leave blah, blah, a like blah. if you like it. Leave a dislike blah, blah. if you disliked it. But you know, we, we prefer likes over dislikes. But you know, whichever one you want to click. It's I got cool. so close to having a nice clean outro, and I just no, just, can't have it. It's I mine just now. butchered that right at the end. So. It's my outro. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye, my outro. <laughs>